All right, today I'm gonna to show you guys how to start your jeans properly and get that crease lined up in the center. A lot of people think this is a new tradition or only for cowboys, but this tradition has been in every single culture since the 1500s. So before washers and dryers, which is a pretty new thing actually, um, people had to wash their clothes in the creek. You know, you had to come up with different ways in order to wash your stuff. Um, and you couldn't do it as often as you can today. So what people would do is create uh, cornstarch to starch your jeans with or make starch out of potatoes. And what the starch would do is protect their jeans from the weather, really. Um, it would deflect water, it would deflect sand, dirt, um, cow crap, whatever. But, um, and then for welders today, and welders use it today to keep the sparks from burning through their jeans. So starch was actually used to protect um, your jeans and your clothing from getting dirty a lot longer. That way you didn't have to wash your clothes, you know, every week. You could go two weeks without actually washing your clothes. I know that sounds terrible, it sounds nasty, but that's what starch was willing, was able to do for a lot of people. And so the crease became popular because it was a, a statement, right? It was a signal that your jeans were properly starched and protected. It was a sign that your jeans were actually new. So the sharper that crease was, the more people knew that your jeans were actually clean. I don't know, don't quote me on it, but look it up, it's actually true. So let's get into it. I'm gonna show you guys how to do that, how to get that crease lined up in the center. It's just a professional clean look. Um, as time goes on, my parents would do this and um, when I went to church, you know, my slacks had to be creased. And so I grew up um, under this tradition and under this culture that my jeans had to be creased if I was gonna look presentable. So this does look presentable. It's a very classy look. And hopefully I can show you guys how to do that without messing it up today. So you're gonna pick your jeans. It doesn't matter what uh, what you go with, uh, whatever you like. It can be boot cut, it can be a straight leg. It can be these cowboy cut Wranglers. Um, so as soon as you get your jeans, you're gonna take them. We're gonna find the centers. So the easiest way to find the center of your jean is to look at these front tabs right here, and you're gonna put those together like this. And then you're gonna pinch it, like that right there, and then shake it out. Now what that's gonna do is get these seams lined up. So you're trying to get this seam lined up with that seam on the other side. And you want those lined up from this side of the jean to the other side. So once you got that somewhat close, you're gonna take the bottom of your jeans right here. You're gonna take those seams and you're gonna stack them together like this. Now with a boot cut jean or whatever, I mean, I wouldn't do this with skinny jeans, obviously, but with a boot cut jean, these kind of go different ways sometimes to get like a curvature at the bottom of that jean to fit over your boot. But on these Wranglers, it's pretty much straight all the way through. Um, so you're gonna stack those together and you wanna try and line those up all the way to the top. Now at this point, I would already have my music going because this is a long process. And uh, you know, I look at it like therapy actually, you know, it's a very calming process. If you've never started your jeans before, it's very cool, it's very, cool experience and it's it's definitely something that you feel like you accomplished once it's done when you see that crease lined up running down the center you just feel like you're on top of the world I swear you do all right so once you got that lined up you're just going to re-verify with every other thing that you can kind of measure with on your jean so I'm gonna look at the distance between the pocket on this side and the pocket on that side, right? So that one's got a little bit more material before the pocket and this one has a little bit less. I wanna recheck and get everything kind of lined up properly because these jeans for the most part are gonna be pretty symmetrical and it's gonna make it easy to line up that crease. So what you're trying to do right now is just get that to a fine point, stretched out as much as you can for right now. You want to go inside here and make sure that your pockets are flat 
with the side of your jean once you get those lined up properly. That way you don't get any extra like wrinkles or creases on the outside of your jean that kind of show through. All right, I'd say we've got those pretty lined up and pretty even. So now we gotta get ready to spray the starch. So you're gonna have, I use a bottle of Stay Flow. There's other starches out there or you can make it yourself. It's actually a very simple thing to make. It only takes about two um, tablespoons of cornstarch to make like a whole bottle. So if you wanted to make your own, um, you could, it's an easier way to actually concentrate the starch even more. Like if you wanted a heavy starch, right? Because I feel like the majority of people want that heavy starch. You know, a lot of people say that if they can't stand up on their own, then you don't have enough on there. Well, some of the bottles that you get aren't going to have a high enough concentrate to even make that happen. You'd have to get like a commercial grade starch or make it your own with a higher concentrate. But this works just fine to get that crease to stay in there for a long amount of time. I'd say uh, this is going to last you at least two weeks. Uh, and you're going to have that line going down the center. And the more you work in your gene with a crease in them, the more that permanent starch line is going to get in there. When you see that white line going through there, that's not going anywhere. So the more riding, the more working you do in your jeans, the more, the cleaner they're going to look, the cleaner they're going to have that actual um, starch line in there. All right. So once you fill your spray bottle, all you're going to do is spray your jeans all over. Now I try to avoid the pockets and I try to avoid the seams. So like I'll spray in this area, I'll get on the seams a little bit, but I don't focus what I'm spraying on the seams because it's a thicker part of the gene. It's going to take a lot longer to dry. And if you're starting your jeans this way, where it's like one of those scenarios where you decided you wanted to put on a nice outfit tonight, um, you don't know what you're going to wear, but you know you want your jeans to look proper and you want them to be creased up. Um, this is going to be a longer process, so you kind of want to make it as quick as you can, right? A lot of people would just bring their jeans to the cleaners. Um, but the thing about that is they're going to get it back to you in like two or three days. This, if once you learn how to do it and get it done in an hour, easy, and you have a clean outfit for tonight. All right. So your jeans should be looking a little bit like that. Um, you know, you want it to get soaked on there pretty good. The more starch you get to set into that jean, the thicker they're gonna be, the more protected they're gonna be. So if you really wanted a heavy coat, you would do both sides. You would do the outside and you would flip them out and do the inside. Since this is a pretty thick liquid, sometimes it's not gonna seep all the way through the jean. Now, once you get this jean soaked, you wanna give it at least 15 minutes to kind of dry and try and soak through the jean as much as possible. Right, once you got your jeans completely covered, they should look something like that. You might want to go through and make sure you got your creases good because that's going to be what really holds that, that crease in there and keeps that professional look on your jeans. So what you do is you just take your starch, you just go through that front line like that just to make sure you got extra coverage on the crease. Now, the next thing you want to do and the most important part because starch, um, will burn and it will leave white marks on your jeans if you do not let the starch sit in and kind of dry a little bit before you iron it. Um, and it's, it's kind of hard to get out of there. You can brush it out. You can use a, a wet cloth and um, wipe it out of there once it happens. But if you go to touch your jeans with your irons and it gives you that big white burnt looking mark, uh, that just means their starch is too wet like this right here. If I was to touch that with an iron right now, it would completely ruin that patch of starch that I have on there and have to clean it off and respray it. So what we're gonna do is take our jeans and you can either throw them under a fan. Uh, if you have like a ceiling fan in your room, just kind of hang them up under there if you can. Uh, hang them up on your front porch, that's the best way to do it. So you can let that starch sit in and dry a little bit. That way when you go to hit it with your iron, it doesn't burn. All right, I hung my jeans up like this and let them sit outside on the porch for about 15 minutes. They should look like that. You can tell there's no more wetness sitting on top of the jean. It's all absorbed into the jean. So now we're good to iron and I'll show you how to do that.
All right, now we want to verify that our jeans are all straight and even before we touch it with the iron. You don't want to iron any wrinkles in there and have to fight it out because once you get to pushing that starch in there, it really holds these jeans in firm. So what we do is just lay them flat, make sure we're stretching them all out. Make sure you look under here and uh, spread the crotch area out a little bit, a little, just to make sure we don't get any wrinkles in there once we start ironing. All right, that looks pretty straight. Now, another secret to avoid burning the starch and kind of ruining your work is to use a bandana or a um, wax paper is really the best way to go with it because when you use these bandanas or a thin t-shirt, um, it will absorb some of, the, some of the starch if it's not you know already completely dry and absorbed into the jean. So when you iron with something on top of the starch, this is gonna prevent the jean from being shiny. So a lot of times if you just go and you directly put the heat, especially with these like steel head irons, when you put that heat onto that starch, it's gonna give them a shiny look. It's better than, uh, you know, burning that, that starch into there and making it look hazy. But if you do this, or if you do wax paper, you completely avoid that. It's gonna give you a clean, like dry cleaner look. So I recommend either a bandana or a wax paper. Wax paper is definitely the way I would go. So now we're just gonna start ironing. This part is easy as it sounds. You're just gonna take your iron. You don't need any steam. The steam is gonna dilute the starch. It's gonna add water to the starch and it's not gonna make it as firm. So make sure you have your steam off, the heat on max, and you just start ironing. Now, in order to get the best and sharpest creases on your jeans, you wanna iron them until they're completely dry and you wanna iron each leg separately. That's gonna allow you to push the jeans in firmer and get those creases in there sharp. Now, if you like your jeans with that shiny look, whenever your jeans are more dry than they are damp, just take the bandana off and start ironing them like that until they're completely dry and you'll get more of that shine on them that a lot of people like. Another method, especially if you don't want that shiny look on your jeans, is to press the creases in with your iron with the bandana on it until you feel like you can't press the creases in anymore. Then you're gonna take it off the ironing board and you're gonna hang it up and you're gonna let it sit outside until your jeans are completely dry. Now, once you do this, it's a lot easier, but it's gonna take a little bit more time. So ironing them dry is gonna take you about an hour. If you set them outside and let them completely dry, it could take you anywhere from two to five hours. So, all right, here they are after sitting outside for about two hours. That didn't take long at all. You can hear how solid they are. I mean, that's what you're looking for if you want them to stand up on their own. You want those creases to be firm in there. Here's some regular jeans that I don't have starched up, just for sound comparison. You can hear how soft that is. So, yeah, I'm excited to try these on. Let's see what they look like. All right, we definitely got them crispy this time. As you can tell, they're a little difficult to get on, but I think they turned out great. Once you learn how to do it and get used to putting them on, it's such a traditional style and such a presentable look at any times. Anybody who sees these and they don't know what it is, they're gonna be wondering why your jeans look so good. Starching is just a presentable look for any occasion. Uh, you can even wear these to weddings and things like that. If you if your jeans look good and starched up, you can pretty much wear them anywhere um, for any occasion. Well, I hope this helped you guys and uh, taught you how to start your jeans maybe a little bit better than you were doing before or just gave you a couple more tips or a couple more ideas to try out to make it a little bit easier for you. Well, y'all keep cowboying on. If you have any questions, hit me up in the comments. Please like and subscribe.